Good morning. Few of you know me, um, but for the rest of you, I am Jan's son, Scott. On, uh, um, my wife, Vaughn, and I are here uh, today with you from Colorado Springs. On behalf of myself, my sister, Lynn, uh, my mother's husband, Tom, and the rest of our family, some of whom I know are, are here with us today also, uh, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for being with us here today in tribute to this, this wondrous woman who is my mother. Thank you. My name is Diana Mitchell, and I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Angie Jan was the example of a true lady and mentor for me. My children and I embraced her as our true family. We're grateful for having had her be such a wonderful part of our lives. We will always remember her very much and love her. This is a psalm from Auntie's Bible, Psalm 145, a psalm of praise of David. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. Excuse me. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. And your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Thank you. We want to sing together a song that was one of Jan's favorites, and it so beautifully expresses the amazement, the wonder of God's love for his children. The title of the song is, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Let's sing together. We'll sing three verses. Verse number one. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is there. that day I 
Good morning. My name is Connie Cochran. Um, I'm a sister in the Lord and a longtime close friend of Jan's. There were six of us in the Bible study and we all grew to love her so much. Uh, that Bible study lasted almost 20 years. In 2005, Jan personally wrote these words and requested that they be shared with those gathered together for any memorial that would take place on her behalf. And they were for all to know. I was called to faith in Jesus Christ in 1976. He is my Lord and Savior unto all eternity. Jesus said he is the way to eternal life. His words are true and trustworthy and have instructed me in the way I should walk in this world. Jesus also said, no one comes to the Father except through me. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would have eternal life. To those of you gathered here today who have not yet believed in Jesus, hear these words. Today is the day of your salvation. The kingdom of God is near. Life without Jesus has no meaning, no purpose, and no joy. May the Lord bless you with his grace unto salvation and may he keep you safe in his watchful care. May his face shine upon you now and forevermore. Janice Kane, August 13, 2005. Just one request I'm 
Good morning, everyone, and I'd like to echo Scott's welcome to you and thanks for your being here today to honor my beloved wife, Jan. And may I also welcome some friends like uh, 
Sherry and Bill, David, Lynn, Zach and Andy, Bruce, Faith, Chris, Donna, Birgit, Brenda. I could go on. These are folks who are with us today via the church's live stream of this very gathering. And so we, we also welcome them among us today. And then some names, names, people. My heartfelt thanks goes out to a, a group of Jan's very close friends that I affectionately nicknamed the sorority. Marcia, Gelda, Connie, Kathy, Vicki. And then there's our devoted faithful friend and neighbor, Sandy, and, and Eileen, and Elizabeth, and so, so many others. And I could go on, I could go on with names. And I'd like to also acknowledge the wonderful and the caring staff and residents at Samaritan Village, especially the CNAs, the hardworking CNAs who Jan was so fond of, so affectionate toward. I call all of you saints. I call all of you saints. You have been so loyal and caring and serving uh, to Jan and me throughout the months that led up to this, this very occasion. Thank you. Thank you. My thanks to you. And I just wish abundant blessings upon you all for giving yourself so, so kindly and so lovingly. Uh, to us. Thank you, thank you again. At the bottom of Jan's photo on the memorial brochure are the words, the beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit is precious in the sight of the Lord. A gentle, quiet spirit. Uh, those words, I think, most appropriately describe how those who knew my wife, my Jan, they would describe her, they would sum her up, a gentle, a quiet spirit. And may I yet add a, a, a few other descriptives like calming and caring, kind, thoughtful, supportive, a humble and somewhat meek soul she was, a, a lady of style and good taste, a good friend, a good mother, a good wife. These uh, descriptives touch Jan's character in, in many ways. We never thought of her as one who was a particularly forceful or a bold or gregarious type person. That just wasn't her style, was it? Or was it? Well, I'd like to take a few minutes to share with you something that I observed about, uh, about Jan throughout the years of our marriage, something that, that most others may not necessarily have, uh, have seen in her. You know, the saying goes, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. And, and today we've seen a number of photos of Jan in various settings and times of her, her life. We've seen them on the screen. And, and there's more at the memorabilia table uh, at the entry. For those of you who haven't yet taken that kind of a fun tour, I, I invite you to do so. But from my day-to-day -day life with her, I learned that the photo that's up on the screen right now, it reveals something about her that's not necessarily consistent with the gentle, quiet, mild, composed person that most folks saw Jan as. That's a photo of Jan's Bible, one of them. She used up many of them throughout our years, the years I know her, she just wore them out. Um, and if someone were to ask me to show one photo that best symbolizes or best represents who Jan was and what made her up and what contributed to her being the person that she was, well, that photo up there right now, it would certainly be in the running. And it says something a little different about Jan. 
You see, my friends, Jan's gentle, quiet Jan was also a fervent warrior. When she took hold of the Holy Scriptures, she was a true warrior. She was confident. She was forceful, uh, really quite bold at times, a shade different from that mild uh, soul we all were familiar with. Let me tell you a little bit more about why I say what I'm saying. One only needs to leaf through the pages of Jan's Bible to see how they are so radically marked up with lines and highlights and arrows and scribbled notes and emotions and asterisks and stars and events, dates, people's names, people's situations, people's struggles. My friends, how she immersed herself in the Word of God, it was her fabric, it was her essence, it was her substance, it was her sustenance, and it was her tool, her template in dealing with everything in her life that concerned her, all that she cared for and all that she cared about. Jan honed her character from her Bible, and virtually every time she and I uh, had prayer time together, she would begin so many of her comments or her petitions by saying, Lord, your word says right here, or as we read in your word, Lord, or something to that effect. And often her very gentle, quiet spirit, well, it took a back seat to some high energy, bold convictions. I don't know, can you hear that? There you go, tap, tap, tap. It was Jan's uh, practice to rise very early in the morning and she would go to the, our upper room or upstairs and, and watch the sunrise come up over the, the uh, hills, over the, the, the trees, and to start her day with prayer and time with her Bible. And, and if I had to briefly go upstairs while she was there, I was, I was careful not to interrupt her during that personal time. But once in a while, I would glance over at her, and she would be doing something that I'll wager she did a lot. There she would be, focused on her Bible, fully enthralled and, and tap, 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 tapping away at some verse or some phrase as if to say, Lord, take note here. I'm tapping away. This is what you say in your word. It's right here, Lord. Tap, tap, tap. Right here, Lord. I see it. I pray it. I believe it. I claim it. Jan was a bold, confident claimer of Scripture. And as she tapped away, she, she claimed the truth and the promises of the scriptures. She boldly acknowledged and, and reminded God that she believed that he was able to make her claims, her prayers, become reality. And her Bible is chock full of places where she made notes of her tap, tap, tap claims on the word of God. Did Jan see uh, all of her faith claims play out in, in her life? No, she, she didn't. But she kept on claiming, she persisted in claiming the word of God because she believed at any time things could change. And this is how she figured it. Jan believed that there would come a time when God would faithfully work her prayers into his great eternal plan, especially her prayers for people who she cared for so compassionately. She believed that uh, as her prayers or her petitions or her praises eventually joined together with uh, others and others and others, that God would eventually respond or relent 
to her prayers. Because of what he says in his word, that Bible up there, and because of his love for her and for those she prayed for. And my friend, she held that conviction boldly for as long as I knew her. The Lord's word was honored. It was used to fight a good fight. She used scripture as a weapon. It was the greatest legacy that she leaves to us and for us today. And I truly believe that, that my wife is now experiencing the joyous reward born out of her faith in and her faithfulness to her Bible, the Word of God. Janice Kane, my wife, quiet, gentle spirit that she was, of course, we all know that, but, but put a Bible, place a Bible in her hands and folks, Katie bar the door, action was going to happen. I know it. I saw it. I stand as witness to it all and to all this a resounding amen. Now, may I just close with a couple of uh, personal comments to me. Jan was a wonderful person. She was a wonderful friend, a partner to me for a long time. I loved her dearly, and she returned her love sincerely to me. And I'm forever grateful that she gave me the privilege, the privilege to be her husband. And lastly, I, I just like to share some special personal words that, that my Jan was comfortable hearing me say and hearing me repeat throughout the days, throughout the time of her illness, of her disability. I would take her hand or perhaps I'd lean down to her ear and then I would say this to her, reminding her. I, Thomas, take thee, Janice, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. This I pledge to you. Thank you and blessings to you all for being here today. Tom has mentioned Jan's love for God's word and his promises. We'd like to sing one other of Jan's favorite songs and it's simply titled Standing on the Promises. And if you wouldn't mind, maybe it's a little unusual at a service like this, but in honor of God's word and his goodness and his promises, would you stand with me as we sing this song together? Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let his praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing Standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the 
promises of God my Savior standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord overcoming daily with the spirit's sword standing on the promises of god i'm standing 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 on the promises of god my savior standing standing i'm standing on the promises of God bless you. You may be seated. Well, I'm going to share something you may not have known about Jan Cain. Jan Cain had beautiful feet. Now, I mentioned that to Marsha earlier, and she laughed. She goes, what? <laughs> well, Romans 10, 14 says... How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Maybe you didn't know Jan was a preacher. She had a different way of preaching a way of sharing good news, of representing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's really amazing the Apostle Paul would say in his day and time that anybody's feet were beautiful because they wore open shoes, they walked dusty roads, their feet were nasty, dirty, awful, stinky feet. That's why washing feet the way Jesus did of his disciples was such an incredible thing. So what he was referring to when Paul says this here in Romans is Isaiah 52, seven, where the prophet says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good to news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. See, Isaiah was telling the people of his day and time, people that were taken into captivity and in exile, that a messenger was coming to proclaim good news of peace and salvation. I don't know if we really understand peace, but peace means God can take all the broken pieces of anyone's life, of anyone's situation, and put them back together. See, God was going to free those people from the captivity of their lives. And in our day and time, the captivity of our sin. And it's in that context that Paul writes, I think what we've maybe heard before, the classic and well-known verse used by Christian evangelists ever since, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's all there in that same chapter. Now for Jan, this journey started in the Marshall Islands. I don't know if you knew that or not, but her and her family lived in the Marshall Islands in the 70s. And it was there in the Marshall Islands that a missionary, a pastor, small church, I'm envisioning it as a shack, you know, or, a, or something made out of palm branches. I'm sure it was probably, it was actually palm branches, led her to Jesus Christ. His feet were beautiful too. Never saw his feet. <laughs> don't, don't know what his face looked like. But this young pastor missionary brought the good news to Jan in this amazing, amazing place. And she came to faith in Jesus Christ. And she was saved. I just asked the question, how can they call on the one they've not believed? And how can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they're sent? Jan's preaching, like I said, it really wasn't so much in words. I really think some of the most powerful preaching 
And proclamation, anyone can do, is through their actions. It's through what I call an apologetic of love. It's through caring. Jesus did that when he washed the disciples' feet. For heaven's sakes. He said, if you're going to be the greatest in my kingdom, you've got to be servant of all. And she served and cared for people. She did it out of what was her profession. She was a physical therapist. That's a hands-on profession. How many of you know that? A hands-on profession that helps people that are in broken places of their lives. It's hands-on. It's actually intimate in a way that it's, it's that ministry of touch, and it's a touch that even though in some ways might be painful, it can bring healing to people's lives. And so she used those skills to help people and she lived out the gospel every day. I'll just give you just a few examples. A lot of you here know Emma Murray. And I just want you to know, I didn't ask her permission, but she gave a massage to Emma Murray every Friday afternoon. The comfort and healing that that brought to Emma, I'm sure was amazing and immense. Some of you are saying, I wish I could have got on that list. How come I didn't know this was a possibility for me, for my body is broken and hurting? But Emma had that massage every Friday afternoon. And afterwards, she did more than that. She would sit with Emma and Lou, and they would laugh and talk. And that's probably where much of the healing happened. How many of you have ever been the person who's homebound or isolated or marginalized and to have somebody who will come and talk and share and laugh and put their hands on you and bring healing. I'm telling you, she was a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. She volunteered at Good Samaritan and had this way of visiting with people by just going into their room and sitting and talking. She had this uncanny way to get people to interact with her where nobody else could. It's probably that gentle and quiet spirit. See, the loud ones like me, the bold preachers, the ones that holler and spit and just make a crazy mess, people run away. Have you noticed that? But the gentle, quiet spirit of someone like Chan who just slips into a situation, she becomes the true evangelist, an amazing evangelist. That gentle and quiet way she influenced people leading them to Jesus by being Jesus among those who needed him. She had beautiful feet. And he says, how can they preach unless they're sent? Well, God sent Jan on these missions. He would tap her on the shoulder, and he would send her with loving, caring news of the gospel lived out in this apologetic of love. So it wasn't like a big, booming voice. It's just a little tap on the shoulder. She was co-facilitator of the caregivers group here at the church. And she would just watch and pray till God gave her that little tap on the shoulder. And he would guide her to the next person. She might call and ask if she could come over to their home. And then she would just make this incredible, huge difference in their life by setting up the home before that person would come home. You know, moving the rugs and adjusting the chairs and helping them through that transition from the hospital or the care center to the house. This one sounds really great. I wish I'd have got in on this one. Sometimes she would just take some cookies over. <laughs> and then they'd want her to stay. And so she would stay. She would just bring the love into the group, caregivers group or wherever, through her healing touch, not only using her hands, but through her gentle spirit as she cared for people relationally. Her feet were beautiful. She shared Jesus' love. She carried out his mission. How precious are the hands and feet. I'm going to add that in. I don't think I'll get in trouble. She used her hands to touch and bring healing. How can they call on the one they've not believed in, says Paul? Well, Jan believed in Jesus, and having believed in Jesus, she called on him. You heard Tom's wonderful message of how she claimed the scripture, and she called on him. And, and one of her favorite books besides the Bible was a prayer book based on scripture. She learned to pray scripture. We should all learn to pray scripture. She, uh, she took that scripture, and she applied it to some of you here. I hope she applied one to me because it's still making a difference. You know what I mean? I'm going to hold on to that promise. She kept a prayer journal where she prayed for some of you using scriptures. 
Blessed are the feet of those who bring the good news, the good news that lives out the love of Jesus Christ. Jan was on mission with Jesus. Early in the ministry of Jesus, Jesus stood in a synagogue to read Isaiah 61, 1. And he gave his mission statement. Listen to it. Jan got a hold of this mission statement. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. That's what Jesus came to do. And that's what we, his followers, can do. I don't know what your skill set is. I don't know what you do. I don't know if you're a carpenter or a car repairman or a seamstress. I don't know what you can do. But there's not a one of us here this morning that cannot make a unique contribution to the kingdom of God by allowing his Holy Spirit to send us on mission just like this lady. It's a, it's a message that we'll preach, and it's preached through her life and her remembrance this day that we too can have beautiful feet. So next time you take your shoes off and you look at those ugly feet, <laughs> maybe yours are beautiful. I've seen some of you ladies, all the pedicures and painted nails, but some of us guys, I'm going to re be reminded every time I put on my shoes, <laughs> the blessed are the feet that those that share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I can do it just like Jan did. May her memory, may her legacy live on in us as we follow Christ as she did. His eye is on the sparrow. I am pleased to present this favorite gospel hymn of Jan's. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? For Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know. sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled, his tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears, and though the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. 
I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Whenever clouds arise, when song gives place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him. From care he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he cares for me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he cares for me. So I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Yes, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. We want to invite you to a luncheon, which is uh, when you leave the worship center here in just a moment. It's just on this side, and you head out that door, and there's plenty of food for everybody here, and tables set up where you can visit and just spend some time. Uh, there's no better place to go. There's not a Luby's in town or any place like that or anything that will work. Just go right out the door and spend some time with, with the family today. And we're gonna close in prayer and we're gonna dismiss, I'm gonna dismiss the family first and uh, then I'll ask that the rest of you follow. But let's, uh, let's stand for a closing prayer. Father, we wanna thank you for Jan, for the impact she has made on so many here for the love of Christ that she showed in such a practical way. She truly was your servant. She truly was your evangelist. We pray that you would bind up the brokenhearted, those that are lost now. They have such a loss, such a, a gap in their lives for their friend, their wife, their mom, their neighbor. She's not here where we can touch her. But I pray you'd bring comfort as only you can. Lord, I know that Jan would notice when anybody's walker was too low or too high and needed adjustment. Or would make notice somebody who needed a gate belt. Occupational hazard of a physical therapist. But she had that spiritual component where she could also see where somebody needed to make an adjustment. Some of us need to make an adjustment in our walk today. Pray that as your Holy Spirit taps us on the shoulder and speaks to us, as her prayers are answered, that we will each make an adjustment. I pray, Father, that if somebody needs a hand up, that gate belt, they need, they need some help, 
that you will motivate us to move around those that are here to lift them up and encourage them. Or if we're the one that's really struggling, we know you won't leave us in the place we are. Would you just bring your peace, the good news of the gospel, the peace, the grace you're gonna give us more than we deserve. We receive that right now, the forgiveness and peace that you would take whatever brokenness exists in this place this day and begin to put the pieces back together. Thank you, Father, for the food that we're about to receive and the time of fellowship. May it be a means of grace to all who are here. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. We'll let the family go as this song plays. shout of acclamation 